Hello everyone, my name is Lewis and I'm coming to you with the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. And I'm going to go right into it. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Awesome scripture. That verse alone is awesome all by itself. It, um, it teaches us that the capability of God and people who believe in God and eventually, you know, that what, what's going to happen to us as a church. This was a foreshadow of something, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a foreshadow of an event that would, would happen later on for a people called the church. And so let me go to uh, Genesis where that is found. And the way, the way that, um, the way the language is written in Genesis is very curious as well. And so we begin at the verse Genesis chapter five, and we see the life of Enoch. Jared was his, uh, was his father. Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years. And then Verse 21 says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. Now he is the father of Methuselah, one of the oldest people in the Bible. And of, of all the people, Methuselah is is the his life was pretty much like a prophetic life in and of himself, in that when he was to die, then the end would come as far as the end of that world that then was before the flood. And so verse 22 says, And Enoch walked with God. And we have come to understand that walking with God means to be in right standing with God and having a great, uh, good, and close relationship with God. Speaking to Him freely and being freely spoken to, on to us by Him, um, you know, indicates for us that we have a good relationship with God. And so those who have a good relationship with God can both speak to God and be spoken to by God. And you you understand his voice, you know him, you can discern his his feelings, his emotions, because he is uh, more closer to you. And so Enoch walked with God, and after he begat Methuselah 300 years, and begat sons and daughters. And so not only did he have Methuselah, but he had sons and daughters, a bunch of sons and daughters, and he lived a couple hundred years later. Verse 23, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. Verse 24 accounts not for his death, which would be a uh, normal occurrence for all the other patriarchs and all the other people under this genealogy. And so with Enoch, it was not a death that took him out of the picture. In verse 24 is where chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 gets this that information from. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And so that curious verse, if left on its own, would have people just like, what in the world is he talking about? And, and I never got, um, I, I should probably do a little more study as far as uh, what the Jewish thought is on this particular verse. But um I would imagine that they would they would also account for other people who have been taken by God, you know, uh, prematurely before death, like Elijah. Elijah, you know, Elijah came down in the chariots of the of the of the Lord, took him, and Elisha was left with the mantle of Elijah, and so he, he had this account that Elijah was taken from the land of the living, and so Enoch just like Elijah, was taken from the land of the living. And in this case, uh, it it's actually says God took him. Where God took him, we don't know. We just know that God took him from one place, and that place he has never been um, seen again in this place on earth. So, Enoch, and so the correlation between God taking him and the idea of him not being all corresponds to Enoch walk with God. 
And in order to walk with God, you have to first believe. And, and, and this is something that we, um, I think that actually, uh, I might just couple it today with verse 6. And so let me read verse 6, Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, the author is referring to faith, of course, but more so the idea of coming to God as a result of one's faith. And so because Enoch had faith in God, he believed and he walked with him. And so his life was was so pleasing to God, you know, the actions that he took was pleasing to God that God said, I'm going to excuse me, I'm going to take you from here. Um, it's not even necessary for you to be here anymore. Um, matter of fact, Methuselah, your son is going to be the last person. The, um, when he dies, the, the end of the, of this age of this world pre flood is going to occur. And so it's not even necessary for you to be here. I'm taking you because you're so great in my eyesight and, this is what God actually, um, what God is actually correlating his walking with him to taking him. And this is the same idea that's going to happen with those that are in Christ. Uh, you have, when it, when the time has come and God says enough is enough, God's going to say enough is enough and take his church out of this world. And the only reason we can actually be taken out of this world is because we walk with God. And the only reason we walk with God and have such a relationship with God is because of Christ in us or us in Christ, vice versa. And so because of that relationship we have, we are now just like Enoch. And Enoch is a foreshadow of events that's, uh, that will occur for us as well. But um, I'm so glad that it's in scripture that it's written down this way. And so we have a blessed hope that when when the time comes, when it's in God's time to say enough is enough and we're done with this, that he's going to take us. And he's going to take us the very same way that he took Enoch. And Enoch, his, his justification lied simply in his faith. Not in his works, because just like anybody else, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Enoch, even though he uh, he was born in sin, shaping in iniquity, just like every any one of us, he lived a life according to God, uh, in fellowship with God, and so God valued that and said, "Okay, you're justified because of your faith." And that's another thing that we should think about. The justification that we have according to our faith. It's one thing to understand justification by faith for those who come to faith after Christ. But those that came before Christ, that's a little, uh, uh, it, it, it involves a little trickier understanding. Remember, God lies, in the, he's outside of time. And so the things that he has planned for the earth and for people has already occurred in the Logos, in his own mind. These things already occurred. The, the fact that Jesus died on the cross has already occurred. He died before the foundation of the world. His blood was shed before us, before the foundation of the world. Before anyone was on this earth, God knew what would, what would be needed and had blood already reserved for us to be forgiven of our sins. Even our patriarch our patriarchal fathers in the faith, one such being the Enoch. And so he grabbed a hold of faith in his time. And because faith is a spiritual thing, Jesus died later on, thousands of years later, but counted Enoch righteous. And so where Enoch went is where Jesus Christ is. And so we have the same blessed hope as well. That even if we die in our faith, that we're going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, present with Jesus Christ. And that our faith has justified us. 
not because we did something for ourselves, but that we trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus, you know, he, he changed our life around uh, as far as our state and standing is concerned. Now we behave in such a manner that, you know, God loves us for those things. Now, Enoch did not have Jesus, the blood of Jesus, uh, you know, to look forward to or to look back to. Actually, I should say look back to. Him. But he only had faith and was justified by faith, not knowing about Jesus and the blood sacrifice offering. And so, but uh, when we read verse 5 and 6, we see that there's a correlation between uh, how God, you know, took Enoch from this world and brought brought him to himself. Whereas in our day and age, when we have faith, we come to God and we might not be taken out of this world, but we are spiritually coming to God. And so there is a there is a directionality as far as our faith is concerned. For Enoch, um, Enoch looked forward to the, the cross, had nothing to look back to, but looked forward to the cross, but did not really know the cross. But the faith in and, in and of itself was enough for him to be justified in his day because God who lives outside of time and in time knows what is needed for Enoch to be forgiven of his sins. And that's the blood of Jesus. And that his faith was tied to the blood of Jesus as well. And so by faith, and I like the, 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 the phrase by faith because you're going to see that written time and time and time again. By faith is the same way as saying through faith or as the result of faith or by means of faith, because of faith. Everything is tied to faith. And all these actions or inactions, and, and I say that very, um, also, because not always it was it was not always something that they did that you know applied faith, but it was also things that they denied themselves because of their faith. And so, for example, and I know we didn't get to it, but Moses, he uh, he, he he denied himself furtherance or progression in the Egyptian culture to be with his people. He could have been rich. He could have been, you know, well off. He could have stayed where he was and been a great man for it too. But he denied himself. He stopped that. He he did not do certain things. And that is accounted for him for, um, for faith also. And so verse six, uh, but without faith, but being, you know, conjunction, you know, bringing one thought to another. That's why I had to read it with verse five. But uh, you're going to find that verse six, you know, accompanies all these other examples as well. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. In order for any one of us to please God and also Enoch, we have to have faith. And so what pleased God about Enoch? It was his faith. And so what is it that, that Enoch did with his faith? He pleased God by not, not giving in to the world around him and becoming like everybody else. Not, not a conforming to this world, but being what God wanted him to be and listening to God and, you know, conversing with God and having fellowship with God, understanding God and his ways not wanting to do bad because, you know, God don't like bad and God like good. He would rather be good. And, and I imagine that's what Enoch was like, always trying to please God to do what God wanted him to do. But again, without faith, it is impossible for you to even have the, the motivation uh, or even the idea or the thoughts you know, that would drive you to do what, what God wants you to do. Because if you don't believe in God, then you don't believe in his words. You don't believe in, in what he likes and what he don't like. You can care less because you don't believe. It's, it's, like, um, it's, like an, um, it's like a variable in the equation. If you don't know what X is, you have, to, you have to go a long ways to get an answer for X. 
but we have an answer for X and X equals Jesus Christ for us. We understand where, where that comes from and our faith is in that. And so that we plug in every mathematical problem with Jesus Christ and he works it out for, uh, for us all the time. And so X equals Christ. And when we have the, the value of X for every problem in our life, we can get around two minus three because two X minus three, you know, we plug in Christ and you know, that's how math is. You know, when we have Jesus, we can plug in and we, we can, we can, we have the victory because of him and we have the answers. We have the solution, but without Jesus, without him, without faith in Christ, without faith in God, uh, we cannot please him. And the only way we can have faith in God, as the book of Hebrews, the, the author of the book of Hebrews alludes to, is that Jesus Christ is that one who uh, who is pleasing to God. Remember, remembering also how he was um, how he was baptized. This is one of those cases where the, the author of the book of Hebrews also mentions that when he when Jesus was baptized, God spoke out of heaven to the um, to the people around Jesus as a testimony to Jesus that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him and so we have the answer Jesus is the answer we hear him we hear Jesus we have Jesus we are in Jesus and Jesus is in us and without faith in Jesus we cannot please God but Again, like I say, when we go back to Enoch, who had not the, the historical figure of Jesus, we can actually say that Enoch applied faith. That same faith that would be required for faith in Christ is the same faith that he had in his ignorance. But God justified him by his faith. We are all justified by faith in Christ Jesus. And so this also mentioned, this is also... um. When we really think about it, when we think about the um, when Jesus died and and did the things that he did, that he went and spoke to and, and preached to the spirits in prison. And the spirits in prison is referring to, you know, uh, um, a compartment in Hades, a compartment in which everyone went to. One was in the bosom of Abraham, and the other was in in uh, hellfire. And those that were in hellfire were looking over a great gulf between them. And this is something that's written in, I think, Luke chapter 16, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when he gave the, the account of the rich man and Lazarus. And so the rich man, he lifted up his eyes in hell being in torment. But Lazarus was carried off into the bosom of Abraham. And we see the, 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 that there was a gulf between them. And so the, the spirits that were in prison before Jesus died, before he made atonement for the sins of the whole world, they were in this compartment called the uh, bosom of Abraham. And so Jesus went to the bosom of Abraham to release them out of that abode. And so that now all those people that were in the, in the bosom of Abraham are now with Christ in heavenly places. They're no longer in the flesh or in some other place. They are now absent out of the body, but present with the Lord, which is true for us who die in our faith now. And so if I die tomorrow, God, God bless. Don't be, don't feel bad for me and re rejoice because I'm in a place where I want to be. I'm absent from my body and present with the Lord. The body has no ties to me anymore. And so now we have Enoch who had this, this, um, this afforded to him before Christ. Yet he was taken the way he was. And so now looking forward, Jesus must have did what he did and preached to the spirits in prison. But there were also people that were already there speaking namely of Elijah and Enoch. And so these people were changed, you know, as a result of their faith in heavenly places. It's kind of the reverse of what happens to people who are alive and remain in this place. When Jesus comes back, those who are alive will be changed. And those who are dead will be resurrected and also changed 
instantaneously with those who are alive. That that you can find that in Thessalonians, and also you can find the idea of that in First Corinthians fifteen. But uh, today I'm just dealing with Hebrews chapter eleven, verse five and verse six, and uh, also the idea of prayer comes out in verse six because when you come to God, you can't just come to God not believing in Him. Otherwise, why are you coming to Him? You're coming to Him uh, out of form and fashion. You're just you're just making making uh, like you're praying to a spirit that you don't really believe in. You're just going through the motions. Some people, they, they pray five times a day to a God that they don't believe in. And if they do believe in, it's not the real God. But when you believe in the actual God of the Bible and you really believe in that God, you will pray more efficiently because now you're not praying to some, you're not praying amiss. You're not praying to some spirit in the sky, you know, and your your prayer is just hitting the, the walls. Before it's not making it to heaven because you don't really believe in heaven. You don't believe in God. But it says here, without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is number one that He is that He exists and that He is a rewarder and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So. You may come to God and you may genuinely believe in God, but you may not get your answer right then and there. But God wants you to continue to keep praying, to keep, you know, making an effort to to uh, to converse with him. And so it's not just believing in God when it comes to prayer, but believing to the to the fullest that when you don't get what you want right away, that you're still asking God that you're still saying, look, God, I asked for this. And I'm wondering what happened. Where, where is it? Uh, can I get an answer? Is it a yes? Is it a no? Is it a maybe? Uh, I'm still, and I'm still believing you so much so that I'm gonna get a yes or no or maybe, or maybe not. You know, whatever. But we're gonna converse. I'm still expecting. I'm still expecting an answer. And if you're not gonna give it to me, I'm still expecting an answer of okay. I'm not gonna get it. That's because I believe that you are and that you are rewarded them that diligently seek me. And I don't believe for one minute that everybody who prays to God, who actually believes in God, gets what they want. Uh, that's some pie in the sky religion there. That's that, uh, you know, give me $100,000. Yeah, God can do it. But if he don't do it, what? He ain't God. He's still God. He just didn't give you $100,000. Maybe maybe he knows better than you what you would do with that kind of money or how you would turn for that kind of money and how you would probably be lost with that kind of money. So he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Apparently, coupled with verse 5, Enoch diligently sought the Lord, walked with him, and he was not, for God took him. And so we have that that little picture uh, to hope for in ourselves that we believe in God, that we we seek Him out, that we we all uh, do everything that we can possibly do to please Him. And even if we d done everything we could and we don't get what we want, guess what? There was a lot of characters that we're going to be reading about that did not get what they want. Matter of fact, some of them were killed. You think that's what they wanted? Some of them didn't have food. Some of them were imprisoned. You think that's what they wanted? You think they didn't pray, Lord, take me out of this? And so a lot of these people in this day and age like to pray uh, and then count their prayers not heard or count God not real because they didn't receive what they wanted. And, you know, they, they don't know the scriptures and they don't know the God of the scripture. They don't know the testimonials of the people of the scripture. Uh, otherwise they would, would wait on the Lord and be of good courage, be of, and, and, and be thou strong in the Lord and wait, be patient. All this stuff is applying to us when it comes to faith, because we might not get what we want. I, I can't stress that enough. And I think that's something that somebody needs right now to hear. You may not get what you want. That person you love may die. And I, I'm sorry you know, we could pray till we're blue in the face. There's some things that's just not going to happen. 
But do we do we not believe in God because things didn't happen or because things did happen? Whether it rains or don't rain, God is still God. And he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And so sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. Sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't. And we're all in this boat together, what we call life. And we all have a fingerprint in and of ourselves, very, very, um, very idiosyncratic to ourselves. Our life is ours and some things that we have uh, may not be for other people and some things that other people have may not be for us. And I kind of took a turn, but I'm, I, I think that may be very necessary for somebody to hear. Either way, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so you may have faith to believe in something, but continue believing in God. It's not about believing in God doing something. It's about believing in God. Because God may not do the something that you want, but believe in God. So with that, I'm going to leave that alone, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.